Grown-ups, how's preschool and home going? Doing okay? All right, well, I had a few ideas. Pumpkins is a fun week. It's really easy to expand at home and learn some science concepts and some math concepts. And of course, work on our fine motor skills. Uh, if you haven't been here before, my name is Miss Lisa. My background is as a teacher, but I get to do some fun activities with my friends to help extend their story times a little bit. Um, I try to keep a minimal effort for the grown-ups, so hopefully none of these are too, too bad for you to do at home. Are you ready? Okay, my first one, always a go-to, is I love working with Play-Doh. So we have Play-Doh pumpkins. This is one of the ideas. You can make orange pumpkins or you can make whatever color pumpkins your child wants. You can work on trying to make round shapes and working on making a ball. That's a great skill to work on. Uh, I, if you would like to extend it to be a math concept, which is what I did, then you can make a printable uh, pretty easily, or you can just draw a picture, or you can just tell your kid, hey, try to make this many pumpkins. Um, but I liked I like these because it makes it something that they can do all by themselves. They don't really need me to sit next to them after the first little bit. So for this one, they would try to put seven pumpkins along the vine so they could try to fit seven on there. Um, by the time you get to 10, there's two vines to make it a little bit easier. But at home, you could even just lay down a piece of string and have them try to put seven vine or seven pumpkins along the vine. Um, what I like about this as well is that you could get out a dry erase marker and trace the number seven or you can roll a snake out of Play-Doh and make the number with the Play-Doh. And same down here, this is a 10 frame, which just means that there's 10 spaces that you could fill in. And you can have them do just a dot with a dry erase marker um, if you've laminated it, or you can make an extra little ball and put it up here, or you can put them down here and fill it in and then put them up here. So. If you're doing a 10 frame, you do want to make sure that you fill up the top first. Um, so that gives you five, and then you would need two more down at the bottom. And that starts to help our friends with their math skills. It really does. It really is a huge boost to their early edition. So I love using this one. My daughter really enjoys it. Hopefully your kiddo does at home. Um, if you can't find that printable, that was just a free printable that I found, but if you can't find something similar, you can absolutely improvise at home. It does not need to be a fancy printable that you laminated, I promise. All right, the next thing I was thinking is pumpkin plate artwork. If you have some paper plates sitting around, they are wonderful for this because they're a little sturdier, but you can absolutely use a piece of cut up paper that's cut into a circle. Um, you can make it extra challenging by having your child cut the circle out. If you draw it, drawing a circle is really hard though. <laughs> yeah, pro tip. Um, so let's see. I went ahead and we did this one as a mosaic piece um, because we had a lot of torn up paper from a couple other mosaic projects. So we used some of our stuff from our cheese that we made um, and some of our stuff from our planets that we made. But if you don't have that laying around or you want to work on a different skill, you can also take a paper plate, punch holes all the way around, and have them practice their lacing skills. So you would probably, um, I'm going to show you a sneak peek that we used the other side of the plate for paint, but you could probably go on this side and punch holes all the way around and they could string orange string all the way across it so that it would look like a pumpkin and then you can add a little tuft of green string at the top if you wanted um, but that's our vine and then our leaves you get it okay so I, I love doing mosaic pieces you're probably getting a little bit tired of them but they are so great for those fine motor skills placing the pieces where they want them painting over them with the watered down glue this time we did the next project first and I'll show you that in a second but we used the leftover orange paint uh, and mix that in too so that our yellows and our reds that were in tissue paper turned into a little bit more of orange so then we got to talk about color mixing too which was fun our next artwork is making a pumpkin patch now we went ahead and tried to find brown paper because that would represent dirt the best um, but you can do it with white paper or any other color paper. I sometimes have my preschool friends here at the library color all of the vines 
which is super fun because then they just get to do squiggles all over the paper. Um, but this time I decided to do an extra challenge and I had mine practice gluing with the regular glue. I know, <laughs> I don't love using it either. But if you are just using, um, if you are letting them just draw it on and then gluing on leaves, which is just tissue paper, you could absolutely just use a glue stick and then you don't have to get out the big glue. Big glue is scary sometimes. Yeah, it gets everywhere. Um, and then, so after we have on the vine and the leaves, then we get out some very random circular things to stamp our pumpkins. So I, I think you can see all of them. Um, we used the lids of some containers at my house that were circular. You can also use one of my favorite things to do is measuring cups. If you have measuring cups that are flush on the bottom, that's the tricky part. You can use the measuring cups. These were from the Dollar Tree and press it into the paint and then press it into the paper. And learning to stamp is a different skill than some of the other art skills we've talked about. So it is a different skill to practice. So it'll take a little bit. It won't just happen automatically. Um, but I love how these turn out. If you are gluing the vine down first, you're going to want to let that lovely mess dry before you try to put the stamps on it. Um, just a heads up. Another thing that I love is I love to do the story of Spookly the Square Pumpkin. I don't know if you have read this book or I know it's a movie now too, um, but it's about a pumpkin that doesn't quite fit in in the pumpkin patch because all the other pumpkins are what shape? They're round. And since he's a square, he doesn't really fit in very well until the night where him being a square is very important. So I really enjoy Spookly the Square Pumpkin and that made me think that we can make all sorts of different shaped pumpkins. So I asked my daughter what shapes she wanted to make and I drew them this time, but you could absolutely have your child draw them or you could draw one and have them draw one. Um, but we started, we did a circle pumpkin because that's what we're used to seeing. And we did a square pumpkin for Spookly, but we worked on, she cut them all out. And so that's still a really great skill to work on cutting out. You can also decorate them all once they're cut out. We ran out of time. But you can decorate them, draw faces on them, give them stems, things like that. But it's a really great introduction to different shapes. So we talked about how a square has four sides that are all equal and it has four corners or points is what she calls them. Um, so we talked about that. We, I, I drew this one, it was supposed to be an oval. She called it an egg, I think she was right. Um, but she did a good job of cutting that out. Then we did a rectangle. Now you can talk about how a rectangle also has four sides, but two of the sides are longer than the other two. And we did a triangle with its three sides and three points. So we had fun cutting those out. Um, it's a great introduction to math skills because shapes are a math skill. Thanks, geometry. All right. And then the next thing I have up here is a pumpkin life cycle. I found so many cute printables for pumpkin life cycle. There were so many. But if you do not have access to a printer, by the way, you can print stuff at the library right now. You can do it wirelessly and we'll bring it out to your car for curbside. Just a heads up. Um, so if you do not have a printer and you do not want to come to the library to get a print job, I will not be too personally offended, but you can draw the, draw it all together. Um, have your child draw. What's the first stage of a pumpkin life cycle? It's going to be the seed. And then you can work your way through the whole life cycle. There are some really cute crafts where you use two plates and draw each of the stages so that as you turn the one plate, it shows with a window, all of the stages, um, that's for more Pinteresty moms than I am. So I, I do not spend that much time on it, but you are welcome to if you would like. Um, as I have said many times, my goal is to put minimal effort in and get maximum return. So I would like to find things that they can do over and over again that do not involve as much hands-on time from me. And we have a couple of things that require a little more hands-on this week. So I would go minimal with this. Um, this is forever ago I made this and it's a matching game 
where I have little cards and they try to put the cards where they go. I found some very cute matching games where you can just print it and you can try to pair them up. Um, you can play it um, as a game of match where you, you know, turn them all over and then turn them over and try to see who can find pairs. Um, but you can walk through the whole process of how a pumpkin grows, which I do find fascinating and kids tend to as well. Um, I've had kids come back a year later talking about how things grow and hoping that we were going to do pumpkins again as a theme. So I hope that you, your child enjoys this. Um, the last thing that we're going to talk about is playing with the insides of a pumpkin. And I know that not everybody wants to carve a pumpkin. I understand. Like if you do not want to carve because you don't trust your child around a knife, that's completely fair. If you don't want to carve because it takes a long time or because it breaks down too fast, uh, it's understandable as well. So whatever your reasons, if you don't want to carve, that's absolutely fine. But I love opening up a pumpkin, just taking the lid off and letting kids see what's inside. And I get out a few things to make it scientific. So I get out a magnifying glass so they can really get a good look at what's inside of the pumpkin. I get out tweezers so they can try to pick things out of the pumpkin. I also get out scoops and things like that so that they can do a big scoop in and see what comes up. Then it's so interesting to see them with the the fibrous strings that attach the pieces to the pumpkin. So fun. I also really enjoy seeing some kids do not want to touch it and some kids really enjoy it. So it's always interesting to see where our own kids fall on that, on that spectrum. Um, if you have a child that does not like touching yucky stuff, um, because it is a little slimy, it is a weird feel. A lot of the times it's cold. Um, if, you, if they don't like that, you can always scoop some of it and put it into a baggie and then seal the baggie and then they can feel it that way. Um, sometimes I do that too and I just put a scoop in the baggie and we can count how many seeds are in that scoop. Um, because counting the number of seeds in a pumpkin is pretty far over most of our, our friends' heads. It's a pretty high number. Um, and I don't think we have the attention span for that. But you can scoop some out onto a plate or if you have... a a texture friend who does not like it, you can scoop it into a baggie and do it that way. So I hope that gave you some fun ideas. You can always plant a couple seeds too in a bucket or in a cup of some sort and just see what happens. Um, I hope that that worked out well for you, that you have some fun ideas that are easy to implement at home. And I hope that at home preschool is going okay. I'm here if you have any questions, you are welcome to send messages to Worthington Libraries. And I would be happy to try to come up with some ideas. If you have a certain area that your child needs some extra ideas, please send me a message. I would be happy to do that. You can just send it to the Ask Us and it would get to me. Um, but I would love to give you some specialized ideas if you need specific things. Um, and I can include them in our next couple videos. So I will talk to you soon. I miss seeing my friends so much. I hope that school at home is going well. I'll talk to you soon.